Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. Once again, we're taking a look at the GPD Win Max. This is GPD's latest gaming handheld. Here we are taking a look at Thunderbolt 3 and eGPU enclosures. Thunderbolt 3 being something new with GPD stuff only because Intel has started including it in uh, Ice Lake chips and uh, pretty much all Intel chips going forward are going to include some form of Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt 4 going forward. Reason being that we have it now is uh, I guess Intel conceded that Thunderbolt was not something that they could charge people for. There used to be royalty fees. Uh, it used to be a separate chip. No one was really paying for that. It was only in premium products, and generally no one was using it. So I guess Intel just basically bit the bullet and now is starting to include it with everything without royalties. Now we have GP, uh, GPD being able to use it and obviously other people. So we should start seeing a lot more uh, Thunderbolt 3 type of compatibility, a lot more accessories. In this particular case, we are taking a look at the Sonic... Uh, Sonic? Sonic. This is the Sonic... E-Graphics Breakaway Box 550. The 550 designates this power supply right here, which is a little tiny 550 watt. It's kind of really nice. Uh, this is a 1080 Ti uh, GPU that I had lay laying around, so I'm using that. Now, uh, the GPU on this which will max is out around 250 watt. I have been able to get a little bit more than that. Obviously, G um, NVIDIA says that it's only 250 watt. It goes a little bit higher. If you overvolt these, it goes even higher. Uh, but with 550 watt, remembering the 80% rule, um, you should only ever use 80% of whatever your power supply is with regards to whatever you're trying to power off of, um, and then you'll be fine. Now, a few uh, best practices. This particular eGPU comes with a one-foot passive Thunderbolt 3 cable. I, I, I recommend using something like this, especially after looking at a lot of uh, different metrics. Uh, they do make longer active cables. Um, there are some negatives to using that, like it's no longer going to be used as a USB-C cable. Um, but more to the point, uh, having a shorter cable is something that I think is ultimately beneficial. Additionally, um, in the use case that I really see this for, when you're going to connect an HDMI cable, make sure that you connect an HDMI or a DisplayPort cable. You're going to want to make sure you connect directly to the back of the graphics card directly, not the HDMI out port on the uh, WinMax itself. Let me go ahead and try to one-hand this. Uh, there is a HDMI port right here. You do not want to use that port right there, okay? Um, not while you're using an eGPU solution. You can use that HDMI port if you're using the integrated graphics. Otherwise, make sure you're using this. You're going to have a bad time otherwise. That's just a little FYI, best practices. Uh, we're going to go into some metrics to kind of show you what's going on with this eGPU and what you should anticipate and expect. I've done benchmarks comparing... Uh, having a 1080 Ti directly on a desktop, and then also on this, and we're going to take a look at that. Uh, talk about the performance penalty of eGPU enclosures. This is of all GPU enclosures, not just for the WinMax. It's just how it works. Uh, and for people that are wondering why in the world would you get this, I present the switch to you. Uh, much like when you're out and about and you use the switch in a portable state, you come home and then you dock it. Then the frequency on the switch itself you know, obviously ramps up. There is no external GPU inside this switch dock itself. It's just that because we are in a powered state, uh, we can up the frequency on the GPU and the CPU in this, thus going into a docked state, getting better performance, which you need for larger format television and stuff. Because you're going to need larger resolutions on larger displays. So pretty much just like that. When you're out and about, you're on batteries, you run less power. When you get home, you dock it, and then you're running 4K. So right now I have a 4K uh, OLED display here. This is what I use for my second PC monitor. In this particular instance, we're going to use it for the uh, GPD Win Max and an eGPU enclosure. Right now we're going to take a look directly at performance here. Uh, it is worth noting that I initially had a Razer Core X. I had poor... A poor time getting it set up and there was a small return window so I had to stop troubleshooting it and just send it out. There are other people that have gotten the Razer Core X to work just fine with the GPD Win Max so I'm going to chalk up my uh, my problems to just bad luck. Um, it is worth noting that I just put in the graphics card in here, powered it on and it worked right away. Um, so I just had bad luck with my Razer Core X. Anyway, let me go ahead and get set up so that we're looking at this. I'm no longer ho holding this camera. Alrighty, so here we are in Device Manager, and as you can see, the 1080 Ti just shows up. Uh, it's worth pointing out that when I connected it, obviously it works as a desktop would. It would say, you know, I have a new display adapter. 
Just go ahead and go to NVIDIA's webpage. You just download the latest drivers, install them, and then there you go. It is super simple to get this set up. I literally had no fuss with this second unit. Uh, it was how I envisioned it happening from the beginning. And thankfully, this second go around was exactly how I was anticipating. We're going to close that, and then we're going to go ahead and open up. Uh, well, not that, but let us. Let me just open up. Give me one second. Alrighty, so we are here in Tech Power, uh, Tech Power Ups GPUZ. The most important thing here that I wanted to show off was the bus interface because this is something that I was pretty much uh, set on trying to figure out. We can see here that it is currently running at PCI Express 3.0 3 X4 lanes. So this is the third generation PCI Express, which is all Intel supports. Uh, AMD is the only one with PCIe 4, uh, and we are running four lanes. So that's uh, four gigabytes worth of, of bandwidth that we have, um, more than enough bandwidth for what we need. And I was concerned... Uh, initially when I was doing my benchmarks and stuff because I was wondering if this particular cable was getting saturated but it turns out it isn't um, our the bus link between these the Thunderbolt 3 is barely getting saturated at all uh, very quickly let's go ahead and minimize this we'll take a look at heaven benchmark that's running you can see right here it is still running DirectX 11 but I am running an ultra quality the tessellation is extreme and the resolution is 1440 obviously it's windowed because I can't run that in full screen. This screen is only 800p, uh, so I, the screen is getting you know drawn outside of the bounds that you can't see. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of these metrics just so you can kind of understand what's going on. Now, this is our current frame rate. This is the API that we're using with DirectX 11. Here's the CPU package uh, temperature. This is the uh, 1035 G7, that's the temperature of the CPUs alone. Again, because we are using the CPU alone here, we're only engaging power on the CPU. So we're using upwards of 18 watts max to uh, drive these CPUs. You can see all quad core uh, is 3.3 gigahertz. You're seeing it very briefly jump up to 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, it's worth pointing out that we never actually get the benefit of 3.6 gigahertz with four core. The only way that you will sustain 3.6 gigahertz is in dual core state, and jumping up to 3.6 gigahertz draws tremendous more power. I've successfully drawn 25 watts just from using 3.6 gigahertz on dual core by its lonesome, just doing you know a uh, Pi benchmark. Um, so. We could, you know, scale up and power up here a little bit more, but for the most part, we are locked in at 3.3 gigahertz across all four cores. Uh, here we are, the GPU bus load. This, in particular, is the important part right here. This uh, is the bandwidth of the Thunderbolt 3 interface right now. And you can see we're only using one-fifth of the available bandwidth that we have. You can see that here is our link speed, exactly as advertised. Uh, here's our GPU core load. We are using 95% of the core. This is actually a little bit less. Uh, the GPU power is more in correlation. 222 watts is 95%. 250 uh, watts would be 100% core load. So we are indeed using a giant portion of the GPU. It's The, the problem is, is that because of the Thunderbolt 3 uh, overhead, there are performance penalties because of that overhead. We have this one foot cable instead of just being directly on there. Let's quickly just take a look at... Let me just go ahead and load up Firefox for you. Alrighty, so these are my 3D Mark Fire Strike, not Ultra, just Fire Strike test. Now, Fire Strike is going to be more dependent on CPU because uh, Ultra settings would be targeting GPU more, but I figured that this would be a little bit more of a fair comparison um, because, you know, if you're running 1080p, not everyone has a 4K monitor. You are much better off running way higher resolutions with lots of effects when using eGPU enclosures. You're going to minimize that performance penalty. Uh, in this particular respect, you can see that our performance penalty is uh, we have 42% more performance when we connect it directly to a desktop. In this case, I have my Ryzen 3600. I wish that this would stop focusing like crazy. I apologize. Um, and this is connected directly to my Gigabyte motherboard. And here we can see the 1035 G7. This is the GPD Max itself. Uh, and then connect it to the Thunderbolt 3 interface. So we're losing about 40% performance. Well, we have a 40% gain, right? 38% um, performance difference. Um, this is not super fair because Firestrike, uh, it's not the Ultra test. The Ultra test actually performs better in this regard. We have less performance penalty. Again, you want to go up in um, resolution. You really want to push resolution as much as you can because uh, you want to try to really bog down that GPU to do a lot of work. We can see that our GPU is as busy as it possibly can be, but that Thunderbolt 3 uh, performance uh, 
penalty really will start hitting us at lower resolutions. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead and load up Monster Hunter uh, World. We're going to be playing on device and then I'm going to be playing on the OLED uh, and kind of showing off the Switch-like um, situation that I anticipate a lot of people, if they wanted to do it, would take. Alrighty, so now we're in Monster Hunter World. This is the Iceborne Edition. I am going to keep it at DirectX 11. Uh, it does support DirectX 12 now in the latest update, but we'll keep it at DirectX 11. Um, very quickly, I'm going to go ahead and jump into... No, don't look at the add-ons, please. Let me go into display settings, just so you can see what I'm running at. All right, display. All right, so now you can see that we are running at 800p right here, and my settings are highest. So we'll go ahead and start my game and load my previous game that I had saved from a long, long ago. Uh, the other thing that's worth noting is that um, I typically record with my camera. So the mic, uh, the dual mics that I have set up on the, the my camera, I'm speaking directly into. When I reset up this camera behind me, uh, I may see a, sound a little bit muted. I will try to speak up. I do apologize for that. Anyway, here we are. This is 800p at high, highest settings. Um, again, I don't really anticipate anyone to be connecting to an eGPU just so that they can run at higher frame rates. I know that a lot of people would like love for this to be running. Uh, <laughs> like This would be sick. If, if we ran at 800p in 60 frames a second, no matter where we went, um, at ultra settings, I think everyone would be super happy with that result. Obviously, you can pay li uh, play like this. That is at your discretion. That's part of the whole you know, dynamic of the GPD PC handhelds is that you have the power. You are in control. If you wanted to play via a, you know, a six-foot cable to an eGPU just so that you can play in a handheld state but with really nice graphics, by all means, go right ahead. Um, you know, if that's something that you fancy, then I don't care. It makes you happy. It makes you happy. I'm happy for you. Um, in my particular instance, I think a lot of people are going to be connecting the eGPU as like a docking situation. So you come home. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that just because that is uh, something that we get less of a penalty on and is far more appealing to me, especially when we think of it as a switch-like interface. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to close this. Uh, I'll go here and not that. I'm going to go ahead and close Monster Hunter. Yes. And then we're going to go ahead and one thing that I've done is already in the background is that I've made that once I connect this cable, let's go ahead and bring this over here. Once I connect this cable, you're going to see the monitor on my WinMax turn off because I set it to be off. So now that's off. Now it's directly driving this screen here. I'm going to reposition my camera. Again, the microphone is on the camera itself. I will try to speak up. I apologize if I sound muted. Give me one second. Alrighty, and we're back in action. Let me go ahead and sit down. Okay, so just so you can see, moving around this trackpad moves around the 4K display. And now we have a very Switch-like awesome time to be had. We're going to go to Monster Hunter World. We'll push play. Now again, I was running at 800p on here. 800p settings are still set. We're going to be forcing 800p directly on this monitor for a brief time until I change the resolution. So give me a second to do that. Kind of move over just so you can kind of see a little bit better. And I'm just kind of doing this just so you can see. It's not super comfortable for me to like extend on my hands in this particular regard, if you were wondering. All right, so it's a little bit hard to see, but you're going to go to options here, and then we're in display. Now we're going to go over here. Let's go backwards because it's going to be easier. Maybe it wasn't. We're going to go to 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160. Back out. Say yes. Now it's going to shut off the game restart the game at that resolution and then again we're going to be driving off of this graphics card you can see the blue wire right here that's going to my OLED right now the CPU on this is what's driving it here is the eGPU um, the Thunderbolt 3 cable so up here is our metrics now again 4k is hard it's hard to run 1080 Ti's don't do 4k 2080 Ti's don't do 4k 60 
Uh, literally, we're going to have to wait till 3080 Ti's before 4K 60 is even a thing. 4K 120 is going to be like nutso land. Um, we're still far away from that. Um, but anyway, let's go into options. We'll go into display. And again, we are running graphics setting at highest, and we are running at 4K resolution. You can see we're running 7 gigabytes of the 11 gigabytes over there. At least I should say, I hope you should see it. We're going to run this. Now, one thing to note is our GPU power. Now, because we're running at 4K and ultra settings, we're going to be really taxing this GPU a lot. So you're going to see this jump up to 250 watts, or at least you should. We should be at 255 watts, a little bit over, because even though NVIDIA says it's 250 watts, it uses, yeah. So 255 watts. We went there for a brief moment. We're at 240 watts. Our GPU core load is at 98%. This is an ideal situation. And again, I am running directly. This is the controller of the GPU Max itself. Now again, I don't think that this is how you should be running. I think that you should be using an external controller at this particular point in time. And then, you know, you'd be sitting back or you're at your desk, maybe using an actual mouse and keyboard uh, instead of what's on here. But this is the attractive thing, right? Like this is what you're, we're trying to accomplish. I just moved my LG mode. You are trying to basically, the GPD WinMax becomes the ultimate switch, right? When you are out and about, you have your switch, you have a decent amount of power with you. When you get home, your 4K ultra power, right? That's what this is. This is having your cake and eating it too, okay? Now, obviously I don't recommend a 1080 Ti for 4K stuff. I don't recommend a 2080 Ti for a lot of 4K stuff. You will have to turn down settings to get uh, more of a 60 FPS frame rate. Uh, this is just the point that I wanted to raise that uh, this is more in tune with what you should be looking at in this type of situation. Um, so again, we're just, we're running the CPUs up here. You can see 3.3 gigahertz, same package power, 16.9 watts. We're gonna to top out at 17 watts to power all these CPUs. The temperature of the CPUs is nothing. We're at 56 degrees Celsius. Before it was at 70 degrees Celsius. Still nothing, but I mean like right now we're at 57. Um, our bus load is at 50%. This goes up to about 40% depending on what's going on. Um, and this is just our transfer rate that's gonna stay constant because that's how much bandwidth we have on this cable. Uh, our current load and the GPU power. Um, and that's it. Like, this is what, what you'd want, right? So you have your switch. You have your PC switch is basically what this comes down to. And that's really what people should be taking away from this particular arrangement is that when you get an eGPU enclosure, it's not to play better on the handheld. It's to have the actual switch dock, right? All right, so I hope that was informative. Uh, I hope you guys got some a good takeaway from this. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.